from Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, Snowden still at a Moscow airport. The latest on Nelson Mandela's health. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. Russian President Vladimir Putin says former American intelligence contractor Edward Snowden is in the transit zone of a Moscow airport but will not be extradited to the United States. Speaking during a visit to Finland, Mr. Putin dismissed allegations Russia is breaking the law and called the case nonsense and rubbish. He said Russia does not have an extradition agreement with the United States. Also, Russia's foreign minister lashing out on Tuesday at the United States over Snowden, who is wanted for revealing a pair of top-secret U.S. surveillance programs and some other confidential intelligence. Jessica Gallerer reports. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says Moscow is not conspiring to help former U.S. National Security Agency contractor Edward Snowden evade prosecution in the United States. Uh, he says Snowden independently chose his own route, and Russia heard about it from the media. Lavrov says Snowden has not crossed the border into Russia, and the Kremlin thinks the attempts by the United States to make it seem like Russia is violating U.S. law are unfounded and unacceptable. Lavrov's comments are the first official reaction from the Kremlin since Snowden allegedly flew from Hong Kong to a Moscow airport on Sunday. Jessica Gallagher for VOA News, Moscow. Afghan President Amig Karzai condemned a Taliban attack near the presidential palace in Kabul that left three security guards dead. He said Afghanistan's enemies had once again proved they are against peace and tranquility in the country. Officials say all of the assailants were killed in the attack. Two suicide bombers killed at least eight Iraqi Turkmen and wounded dozens more in an ethnically disputed northern city on Tuesday. Elsewhere, a separate bomb blast struck a minibus carrying Shiite pilgrims in the holy city of Karbala, resulting in three more deaths. There were no claims of responsibility. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and Saudi Foreign Minister Saud al-Faisal met in Jeddah on Tuesday. They talked about coordinating efforts to send arms to opponents of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Billy Scott Stearns is traveling with Secretary Kerry. Foreign Minister Saud says his government is doing everything it can to help the Syrian rebels and wants a clear unequivocal international resolution banning weapons to the Assad regime and declaring its legitimacy null and void. Syria is facing a massive flow of, uh, of weapons to aid in the bed that invasion and the genocide. This must end. Saudi Arabia and Qatar are thought to have been supplying weapons to Syrian rebels for some time. With President Barack Obama's decision to start arming the rebellion, Secretary Kerry is here to help coordinate that campaign, but not publicly. Scott Stearns, VOA News, Jeddah. Qatar's Emir Sheikh Hamid bin Khalif Al Thani is stepping down and handing power to his son, the country's 33-year-old crown prince. 61-year-old Amir says the time has come for a new generation to lead. The Amir led Qatar since 1995 after taking over in a bloodless coup from his own father. Relatives of former South African President Nelson Mandela gathered at his home in Eastern Cape Province Tuesday as Mr. Mandela remained in critical condition in a Pretoria hospital where he suffers with a lung infection. South African media reports say children called the meeting to presumably discuss Mr. Mandela's failing health. Also, Tuesday, residents in the city of Soweto talked about their wishes for the ailing 
94-year-old Nobel Peace Laureate. My message would be simple, a speedy recovery because we as a nation and his family, we need him more than we did in the past. He's been an inspiration to most of us and uh, may the good Lord uh, have mercy upon him and make him well. But if, if it's time for him to let go and leave us now, so be it. Officials and family members said last week that Mr. Mandela appeared to be improving, but the reports turned grim on Saturday when the government said his condition was critical. And President Obama calling for sweeping policy changes to combat the impact of climate change, both in the U.S., and throughout the world. You can get more on that story and the rest of the hour's news on our website at voanews.com.